the circumcision. We worship God in spirit. Not in the flesh. To be bringing sounds from heaven. And yet we are bringing those sounds in the gyration of demonic spirits. you and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not it is the one that answers prayers we have come to tonight if you believe that every prayer you will pray here tonight the Lord will answer lift your voice and magnify him lift your voice and give him glory the one that answers prayer the one that answers prayer unto him we have gathered tonight unto him we have gathered tonight oh rabada bashata ele kabila moko barati 
Ola barada manakai. Oh. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you tonight. Our hearts are ready, our spirits are open, our faith is firm, our trust in you is absolute, our confidence is unshaken. We know that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in the midst of them. Lord, we know that whenever we lift up our voice in prayer, you are gracious and merciful enough to look upon us in mercy. To grant unto us the very things that our hearts have prayed. Lord, tonight. Lord, tonight. Deliver the oppressed. Amen. Save the lost. Amen. Heal the sick. Amen. Lord, tonight, everyone that has come here with an expectation, let none live here disappointed. Amen. It is unto you, O oh God, that we have gathered. On site and online, Lord, we did not come for a man. We came for you, O oh God, that scriptures clearly identify that with you nothing is impossible. Lord, do such strange miracles tonight. Orchestrate such powerful interventions tonight that before the sun rises tomorrow, it will be obvious that we had an encounter. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl connected to this meeting tonight, Lord, give them testimonies. Lord, what money cannot buy, release in this place tonight. Since we started praying at 3.30, the weight of glory has been heavy in this house. Lord, let your presence get stronger and stronger. Amen. That where we are seated, where we are listening, where we are connected, signs and wonders will begin to happen. Amen. Father, today is the last day of a 40-day journey. We ask, oh God, that our, our sojourn in the wilderness will come to an end. Amen. That by reason of this meeting, oh God, we come out of Egypt and we enter into Canaan. Amen. You have told us that this year is the year promises will be fulfilled. Is the year we will begin to look like our prophecy. Amen. Lord, by reason of this meeting tonight, as we go to the communion table, as we pray prayers of deliverance, let it be obvious that you did not lie. Amen. May our hands hold the things that our hearts have cried for. Amen. And when we are done, as we sing and we praise, may Jesus be glorified. Yeah. And may the Father be highly exalted. Yeah. In Jesus' name we have prayed, we have given thanks, and we have worshipped. Yeah. Clap your hands and give God glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in God's house. Praise God. I'm excited tonight. I'm looking forward to great things tonight. And I'm trusting that the Lord will show us mercy. Can you welcome your brother, your sister to the tent tonight? It's the last day of our 40-day fast. And we trust that Jesus will do us good in the name of Jesus. Real quick, some administrative matters before I dive into the teaching tonight. Just to remind you that we are still on progress with our land. 
and uh, by the grace of God, in a few days, we will start the foundation. The reason we've not started. Yes, you can celebrate God. Uh, the major reason we have not started is that we still needed to sand fill certain portions of the land and then they are building materials we needed to purchase. So, as of today, we have received granite. On Tuesday, a truck of iron rods will be arriving. And by the grace of God, five, six days after then, we should start the construction of the foundation. Uh, yes, we can celebrate. Our budget for the foundation is 40 million. As of today, we have 38 million. <laughs> Glory to God. I want you to know that God is with us on this journey. We took a huge journey of faith and God has shown himself, himself faithful. Uh, so we are just short of two million for the foundation budget to be wrapped up and then we we'll move to the next phase which is about 150 million. That is the superstructure and the roof. And then after that we'll go to mechanical, electrical and then before we now start talking about finishing windows, doors, stage, and all of that. By the grace of God, in December, we'll be in that building. So I salute all of you, all of you that are here. You've been sacrificing. I told you it's a year of sacrifice. If you've given before, give again. If you've given again, give again. If you've given again, again, give again. We keep giving until the target that the Lord has given us is achieved. So feel free to make your sacrifice. I salute all the partners online. Our brothers and sisters from around the world have been given. Can we celebrate them? They've been given. Been given. So feel free to join us. If you are worshiping with us for the very first time, um, please don't be offended. It's a project that God has given us and we encourage you to be a part of it. And God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Our fast ends today. Next week we'll be having a night of sweet incense. <laughs> Next week Sunday is going to be a night of worship and prayer. So we will unleash sweet incense on Sunday. So come prepared. We will worship, we will pray, we will worship, we will pray, we will do intercession. And then we will see how God helps us. Uh, are you ready now? Remember that this weekend is a weekend of self-help. So what I'm going to do, I will teach. And then we will begin to pray. And we will trust God that this last day will indeed be the last day of the feast. And the Holy Spirit will be poured out upon us mightily in the name of Jesus. Now just to do a quick recap. A quick recap. My pivot scripture is in Genesis. But before I get there, uh, I want to do a recap. Because I recognize that most of the people that are here tonight have not been around for the three days so far thursday friday and saturday so there's the need for us to generate some form of platform upon which you can engage in prayer tonight so we'll do a recap on thursday what i attempted to do was to provide us the basics of what deliverance is uh, because if you don't understand the essence or the reason why we pray deliverance prayers, you'll be reluctant to engage. You'll probably think that we don't have work to do or we are not theologically sound enough. That is why we are praying the kind of prayers we're praying. So there's a need for us to generate understanding. And in generating understanding, the first thing is you need to understand that Deliverance is a warfare for the soul. 
Deliverance is not a warfare for your spirit, but the center theme or the core of deliverance is the transformation of your soul, the freedom and transformation of your soul. Uh, this is important. So when you pray, you need to understand that it is possible that even though your spirit is alive because of your salvation experience, there are areas of your life that still have the possibility to be under the government or the dominion of Satan. Are we together? And if you've been here since Thursday, I said to us that the first entrance to deliverance is salvation. Salvation. So if you are here tonight and you are not born again, but you have issues in your life, or you are following us online, you are not saved, you are not born again, and you have noticed demonic activity around your life, your first step is not to pray that God should intervene in your health, intervene in your finances. Your first step is to first of all be born again. Because what salvation is, as Colossians chapter 1, 13 told us, is... You are delivered from the power of darkness and you are brought into the kingdom of the son of his love. That is deliverance. That's salvation. You you God delivers you from the power of darkness and then he conveys you into the kingdom of his son. It means therefore that if you are not born again, this scripture is very clear. If you are not born again, it means you are under the power of what? darkness. It's not ambiguous. You can't guess. It's straightforward. It's not neither here nor there. It is either here or there. So if you are not yet born again, you are under the power of darkness. And how does the power of darkness exact government over your life? Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 2. Go to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. He shows us how the power of darkness works. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, verse 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to what? The prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks where? So if you are a son of disobedience, there is a spirit at work where? In you. What that spirit does is that it enforces the power of darkness. You need to understand, brothers and sisters, that there's an ancient long war that has been on even before you were born. It's a conflict between light and darkness, a conflict between God, who is good, and Satan, who is wicked. It's a conflict. And in this conflict, God has his agenda. God has his purposes. God has his plans. God has his desires. In this conflict, Satan has his desires. Satan has his plans. Satan has his purposes. The center of this conflict is whoever arrests the man first will control the outcome of that man's life. So in the visible realm, there are people who are on the Lord's side and there are people who are on Satan's side. In the realm of the spirit, there is no neutrality. It's either you are on the Lord's side or you are on Satan's side. So everybody that is alive, every human being that is alive, is using their life to give expression to one of these realities. It's either you are expressing light or you are expressing what? It's either you are a son of obedience or you are a son of what? Disobedience. There is no neutrality. So when you see them release a song in the secular world and the man brings a ram head to the stage and it's like he's performing demonic worship. It's not an accident. He's representing a reality. He's an agent of Satan. It's you that does not know. That's why you buy his songs. You listen to their songs. You dance to their music. When a guy is releasing an album and the dancers in the album, all their bum bum is outside, all their breast is outside, it's an agenda. 
A kingdom is trying to give expression to its appetites, to its plans, and to its purposes. And the agent for expression is mortal man. So if you cannot find God in a generation, it's not because God is not available. It's not because God has changed. It's not because God is weak. The problem with that, that result is that God does not have the right kind of men that can express him. And the thing about God is, even though he can use any vessel, he will rather use vessels that have been submitted to him. God is not under pressure. That if the vessel is corrupted and smelling and rotting, God will now pour himself into that vessel. That's not how it works. If God is going to pour himself into a man, that man would have met the basic requirements of holiness, consecration, separation from the things of the world. So Satan's agenda is finding expression. That's why you have prostitutes who are willing to sleep with men for money. They are agents of Satan. That's why you have native doctors. You know the native doctor that you go and see? You will travel in the night, in the bush. The man's hot. He probably does not have roof. Rain used to beat him in the night. Then when you get there, he says, I want to make you rich. Oh God, why did you not make yourself rich? The thing that he says he has capacity to give you, he himself does not want it. Yet you enter into the bush to go and see him. You think he's foolish. You think he doesn't like to drive Mercedes. Even the native doctor knows that Satan is bad, even on Sunday. He knows the one whom he serves, that if he gives you something, it is never free. So when you go to a native doctor and you think you have received a blessing, even the native doctor knows that what you have received from his hand is a curse. He's constrained by his covenant with Satan to live a certain way. And he has become Satan's agent for the spreading of the influence of demonic spirits, darkness, witchcraft, and all kinds of oppression. So, man of God, if you are saying that salvation in itself is deliverance, then why is it that you are saying that a Christian can be oppressed, a Christian can be afflicted? What kind of influence, what kind of control, or what is the level of influence or control that demonic spirits can have over a Christian? And in my trying to explain this, I took you to 1 Corinthians 3, but I don't want to read 1 Corinthians 3 tonight. I want to read 1 Corinthians 6, because there's a way 1 Corinthians 6 puts it. Okay, let's read both of them, so you see the difference. 1 Corinthians 3, give me verse 16. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God does what? Do you not know? So Paul is asking a rhetorical question. In a rhetorical question, you are emphasizing information that you expect your listener to already know. You are not really looking for an answer. He says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? So... Bro, come. Come, come. I think you walked with me on Thursday. So this double portion. Come. Come, come, man of God. It was your birthday some days ago, Abby. Tell him happy birthday. Happy birthday. My God, they are tall. They're almost as tall as me. All right, come back a little. Come back a little. Right. So we said that Paul was speaking to people who would understand what he was trying to communicate. Are you with me? So when he says, do you not know you are the temple of God, you need to realize that what Paul was doing here is that he was using a relatable object to describe a reality that you otherwise will not be able to understand. So in using the temple, he was helping them understand the mystery of the indwelling presence of the Spirit. Are you here? 
So for you to understand what Paul is saying, you must first of all understand what the temple looks like. Am I correct? So he says, do you not know that you are the temple of God? So how did the temple look like? In the temple, you had the outer court, you had the inner court, and you had what? Holy of Holies. Or you call it the most holy place. So anyone that came into the temple is either you were in the outer court where that was available or open to everybody. The inner court was open to only priests. And the Holy of Holies was open to only the high priest. So there were restrictions in that worship. Just as in the temple you had outer court, inner court, Holy of Holies, you also have in your body, spirit, soul, and what? Body. So when he says that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you, the question is now, in which part of the temple does the spirit dwell? Are you here? Have you read scriptures where the Bible says that know ye not that he who is joined to the Lord is what? Not one body. Not one soul. So the union between God and man happens where? In the spirit. This is why the Bible says that when you get born again, it is the spirit that beareth witness with your spirit. That word witness just means testimony. So there is a conversation that goes on between your human spirit and the spirit of God. And the spirit of God testifies to your spirit that indeed you are alive, you are regenerated, you are a child of God. Are you with me? So in the temple arrangement, the marriage between man and God happens. So when you get born again, the spirit of God takes residence in your spirit. Your spirit comes alive and through your spirit, God now begins to educate your soul. Are you here? A, a thoroughly educated soul. When a man is thoroughly educated by the spirit of God, what happens is that man becomes a spiritual man. Why? He is being led. By what? So his thinking, his appetites, his passions, his desires are spirit-based. Because the Bible says there is a conflict that happens in every man. He says that the flesh lost it against the spirit. And the spirit lost it against the flesh. That means the spirit has its own desires. The flesh has its own desires. And these two are at variance with one another. So when you get born again, your flesh does not get born again. That means that is why... When you got saved and you said, Lord, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior, take over my mind, take over my body, and you said, now I'm born again, your nose did not become pointed. That flat nose that they used to use to stroke you in school is still flat now. Nothing affected your physical look. It had nothing to do with your physical appearance. The beauty of salvation, that freshness, that sweetness, that lightness that you felt was where? All right. So it did not affect your body. Your body is just a house for your soul and spirit. The person that is not born again, the reverse is the case. Instead of the spirit educating the soul, the flesh educates the soul. That posture is what you describe as a natural man. What did I call it? The natural man lives from his flesh. That is, his flesh controls his soul. So he's a soul man. But that soul is a soul not under the government of God. That soul is a soul under the control of flesh. So he's a natural man. But a Christian who is born again and has met Jesus... And still allows his flesh to control his decision. He's not a spiritual man. He's not a natural man. He's called what? 
a carnal man. He's ruled by his senses. He's sensual. He's carnal. So if the Holy Spirit is in the Holy of Holies, it means therefore that the outer court and the inner court still have possibility to be invaded. Are you with me? So even though you are born again, there is still possibility that Satan can come here to your soul. It's still possible that Satan can afflict your body. It's possible. Let me show you some scriptures. Stay with me, please. Ephesians chapter 4, give me 26. Ephesians 4, 26. Are you getting blessed? Yes, sir. It says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun do what? Go down on your wrath. 27. Nor give place to who? It means, therefore, that as a Christian, you have capacity to give place to who? So even though you are born again, you can by your own decisions. For instance, like anger. Go to 25. Go to 25. Putting away what? Let everyone, each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. So a lying tongue is also an access. You can use your tongue as... To, to lie and fabricate stories. And that gives Satan opportunity to invade your space. A lying tongue. Give me First Peter chapter 5 and uh, verse 8. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because what? Walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom... Who was Peter speaking to here? Believers. And he said, a few things you need to know. One, you have an adversary. And this adversary is not unique. As in this adversary is automatically your adversary because of the side to which you belong. It is your adversary. It is follow come. It is part of the package or the consequence of being a Christian. He is your adversary. So even if you come to get born again, and then you say, Satan, I know they disturb you. I just did my own. No. He is your That's the first thing. There. The second thing about this is, this your adversary is consistently walking around. And what is he doing? Looking for whom... If it were not possible for the adversary to devour a believer, Peter would not be giving them this warning. Are you here? So if we want to paraphrase or rephrase this, Peter is saying, be aware. There is someone who is looking for occasion to destroy you. Don't give him that opportunity. So your adversary, the devil, is moving around like a roaring lion, seeking for whom to devour. Because your soul that has your will, it has your mind, it has your thoughts, it has your desires, your appetites, your passions, can become unguarded. Because you see the thing about this union, the Holy Spirit will not force you to submit yourself to him. It is in your yieldedness to the Holy Spirit that the control and the government of God is established over a believer. The difference between two Christians is their level of submission to the Holy Ghost. If you find two believers and you touch their spiritual lives, and you see that one is richer than the other. It's a matter of yieldedness. It's a matter of consecration. It's a matter of submission. Many people have the Holy Ghost, but they are not submitted to him. He doesn't control the way they think. So the person has the label of being a Christian. But when they open their mouth to talk, they sound like unbelievers. Have you met those kind of people? 
They are thinking. You, you, you look at them and say, ah, you've been born again five years. You still think like this. It's not their fault. They have the Holy Ghost, but they don't want to yield to him. Because the thing about yielding to the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is going to demand all of you. It's a love union where compromise is not permitted. Every portion of you, the way you think, you will begin to control the way you think. Somebody can offend you legitimately and you have a right to be angry. When you have submitted to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will say, put your right aside. Don't say anything. Then the person will now think that it's because their own voice is louder when they are shouting. You for talk now if I don't slap you. <laughs> Meanwhile, the only reason you have shut your mouth is because your supervising authority. The Spirit of God has said, don't talk. The Bible speaks about Jesus. He said that as a lamb to his sharers, so he went to the cross and he opened not. Is it that Jesus could not talk? He could talk very loudly. But his supervising authority had told him, no need to talk. Yield. So your level of yieldedness determines also how porous your soul will be. The integrity of your soul life is compromised by your lack of submission and yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. So Satan can take occasion of your arrogance, your pride, your rebellion to afflict your soul. So the person's will is now compromised. That is why you find addicts. The guy speaks in tongues, zoo, 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 but he can't stop gambling. His will to say no to gambling has been compromised. If you trace that thing, you will find out that the problem is that he could not yield his desire for money to the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost was working on his heart, working on his soul, he thought that he was suffering. He said, how can I be serving God and I don't even have money to go to ShopRite? You will see ShopRite in heaven now. How can I be there? When you hear people talking like, how can I be a Christian? And they are, they are comparing themselves to Yahoo boys or comparing themselves to internet fraudsters. The problem is a matter of yieldedness. And then once Satan sees that your will is compromised, he will release a demon quickly. A demon will be dispatched. And the more you compromise your will, the more the demon gains what is called a foothold. That's how a military outpost, a satanic military outpost has now been built on your emotions. When you meet a brother or a sister who their mood swings, their mood swings are not normal. She can just be laughing now. Two minutes she's in the depth of despair. In the depth of sorrow. That's not normal. That's not mood swing. That's demonic manipulation. Any small thing, she's depressed. Any little thing, her joy is stolen. No matter how positive her life is, she never sees the possibility of victory. It's a demon. There's a part of her soul that has cracked. And Satan has gained what? Access. So how does Satan deal with the body? In dealing with the body, he deals with the body through sickness. Let's look at Luke chapter 13. Let's begin at verse 10. Can I release them? Okay. <laughs> now he was teaching in one of the synagogues when? On the Sabbath. So it was a fellowship day. It was a regular fellowship day. Are we together? It's like we are describing and saying now he was teaching in one of the Arusian centers on Sunday or on Monday, their service day. Right? Next verse, 11. And behold, 
there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity. How many years? And was bent over and could in no way raise herself. What did she have? Notice the Bible did not say she had a sickness. It described it as a spirit of infirmity. So the first thing you notice is that this woman was a regular member in church. Are you here? Yes, sir. She came for service as usual. It's indicative of the fact that this was a woman who liked the presence of God. Second thing is, all the time she had come to church, she was in service. But her life never changed. So every time she came to the Sabbath and they did their religious stuff that they needed to do, finish service, her life perpetually remained. Is it possible that every time she came to service, those who were the leaders of the day were not able to discern that this thing was not a natural occurrence. Because in deliverance, I said to you in the space of these three days, that recognizing what is wrong is part of the steps to your deliverance. If you refuse to admit that this thing is not normal, there's some demonic dimension to it, you will continue pursuing the wrong thing. You must be able to realize that this, this my anger is not normal. This my sexual appetite is not normal. This my love for money is not normal. How is it that I am speaking in tongues? I was listening to my brother lead prayers and he was saying that, you, how, how can you, every time they are pursuing you in the dream, very soon we, we, will, we will soon select you for Nigeria to go and run 400 meters because they are always pursuing you. They never catch you. You are always running in your dream. Then when we come for prayer meeting, I say, ascend. You take a posture like this and you say, gi, gi, or God. Not be you that they pursue for life. You know, as a younger boy, goats used to enter our compound. Stray goats. Stray goats that belong to other people. So we drive it, drive it, drive it. The goat will still come back. So me and my siblings decided to teach the goat a lesson. So when it entered into the compound, straight into the compound, we just opened the back on it, and it found itself there, and we locked it. Then the goat will go to the wall and turn, and as it's coming back, we flock it, flock it, flock it, flock it, flock it, flock it, go, flock the goat. We abuse that goat. But that's not the story. Do you know when we had done that thing, we were rejoicing, we were happy. One time the goat got to the back as it was coming this time. <laughs> the goat had gotten to the point where it was tired. If you want to kill me, kill me. The horn, he just said the horn like this. <laughs> there gets to a point in your life where you say, I can't be, I can't have the Holy Ghost and be the one running. I can't. You will see that once that consciousness begins to hit your spirit, even in your subconscious, you will be a lion. Even in your dream, Somebody says, you try me, you go there and you bend the finger. Because you have become so large in your spirit, the voice of condemnation no longer has a hold over you. Tonight, I want you to stop running. Tonight, I want you to look at areas of your life when we begin to pray and say, I have had enough. I cannot have fasted 40 days, especially if you joined us in this 40-day fast. Even if you did not join us, that you are here tonight, you are implicated. I cannot. There's no way I'm going to have 2024 the same way I had 2023. Some of you are afraid to sleep. I saw two people. I don't want to prove anything. But I can. If I ask for them now, they will come. Two people. 
every time it gets to night time when you want to sleep, fear grips you. You are afraid of sleep. Because sleep for you is not rest, it's torment. But I saw the angel of the Lord. Your case was clearly mentioned to me. He said, he's the one that giveth his beloved sleep. That molestation, that affliction is going to end tonight. Tonight. So the Bible says that this spirit of infirmity, the other thing you see there is that it had distorted her body. She was bent over and could not lift herself up. In the soul, what the devil looks for is control. In the body, he cripples. So he can twist. He can release, release diseases that eat into the body. Consuming demons. So what they do, things like cancer are in that category. They are just eating the body. Sores that will not heal, they are in that category. Just eating the body. The place of his oppression is the body. You are in constant pain. Because he wants to creep, he wants to twist. He wants to, the beautiful creature of God to become like a mangled entity that is not beautiful to look upon. I am trusting God tonight. That as we pray on site and online, in these four days, I don't know why, but that thing called autism has been a cry in my prayer place. Children that are autistic, not properly developed in their mind, I'm praying tonight that God will give us a testimony. Yeah. And paraventure, there's a sickness in your body that has refused to go. Because I want to tie up the teaching later 6.30, then we'll pray for 15 minutes, we do communion, we do impartation, and then God will take charge. I'm trusting God. If you have identified a sickness that has defied doctors, when we pray tonight, make sure you release your heart by faith. Let's go for that. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Where are we? What verse are we at? The scripture is gone. Wait till we're almost done. Okay, he's here. But when Jesus saw her, what did he do? He called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loose. Preach to somebody. If it's a man, say, Man, man. you are loose of, of your infirmity. Preach to somebody else. I want you to preach it like you mean it. Say, Man, man. woman. You are, you are loose from your infirmity. If you believe it, say it loud. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 9, give me verse 10. Mark chapter 9, verse 10. Go to 11. Quick, quick, quick. 12. 13. 14. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and the scribes disputing with them. After the transfiguration on the mountain, he came down and this is what he saw. 15. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him did what? Greater him. Next verse. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? The one of the crowd, not the scribes now, one of the crowd. His matter was urgent. He could not wait for the scribes to answer. He said, these people go waste my time. So he interjected quickly and answered. He said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a what? He didn't say that the boy was dumb. He said he had a what? Mute spirit. He, the father recognized that this dumbness was not normal. 
You see, if you don't admit that this thing, demons are involved, you will take it for granted. He said, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. 18. And wherever it seizes him, so the spirit, the father recognized that the spirit had a certain control over the boy and his body. He says, wherever I seize it in, he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes what? Rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. So the father knew that the oppression was demonic. Next verse. He answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him. Now, they, they expected that as they told him that his disciples could not do it, he would have turned to only the disciples. But Jesus spoke to what? A generation. Indicative of the fact that once you become associated with Jesus, a natural consequence is that you should be able to cast out what? Devil. Every one of us. Next verse. 20. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him. Die, the spirit now wanted to do audition. Wanted to impress Jesus. The spirit immediately convulsed him. And he fell on the ground. And wallowed. Foaming at the mouth. Oh thank you Jesus. 21. So he asked his father. How long has this thing been happening to him? And he said, from where? Even if what they are using to oppress you happened to you as a child, today is the end. Yeah. No, no, no. You are not here. If you believe today is the end, say, today is the end. I can't hear you. Say, today is the end. 22. And often he has thrown him both what? Into the fire and into the water to do what? But if you can do anything. Hmm. You don't know how powerful the mercy of God is. You don't know. Some of the best things that have happened to me in my life was because I threw away what you call dignity. And I lay before God and I begged him, have mercy on me. You know, you, 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 you tell yourself that, okay, if it not happen, I go manage my life like that. There are some things I refused. So what I did was I went to him. Say, have mercy on me. The father recognized that this matter was not one for Gragra now. He needed a spirit reality. He didn't ask for power. He asked for what? Mercy. Because if the mercy of God is evident, the power of God will be limitless. Limitless. 23. Jesus said to him, if you and believe all things are possible to him who what 24 immediately the father of the child did what Benjamin are you seeing it the father did not say oh come on now I believe come on Lord I believe the Bible says he did what and said with what? Yes. yes. That's a desperate man. He had made up his mind that today is the end. Lord, I believe. Help my own belief. 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him. 
This is what we are going to do today. You are going to look at areas of your life and say, come out. And enter there. No. You'll be shocked that the desire for alcohol will die. If you believe, you know because the modern day Christian wants to outsource his belief to the preacher. He wants to outsource his tears to the preacher. So he comes for deliverance. Right? Say, what's wrong with you? I don't know. I'm not a visible. <laughs> okay. Oh then you're looking at him. Is this a serious person? He just wants you to go in the spirit and say, lebo, 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 lebo. He himself is not even dead spirit. As he's there, he's even planning to go and do another one. He's not serious. There is no, no, no pain that my life has become a caricature. I'm supposed to be better than this. How is it that you have become a debtor running from people hiding because of gambling? How come sex has taken advantage of you to such a point that you cannot say no to sexual immorality? How did you become like this? So you are telling me with all the way that God created you beautifully, Satan can reduce you to a puppet. Satan has your puppet strings. He can pull your thoughts anytime and you enter depression. He can pull your desires anytime and you are in front of pornography. You are a slave. And yet, when they say pray in tongues, your tongues are loud. He said, come out of him and enter him. How? No Somebody say no more. No more. Say no more. no more. One more time. Say no more. So what is a demonic oppression? We are getting ready to pray now. Ooh, I feel a weight of glory now. Ooh. A demonic oppression, if for those of you who are writing and taking notes, is a spiritual attack. A demonic oppression is a spiritual attack from a demonic spirit. A demonic oppression is a spiritual attack from a demonic spirit which seeks to influence a spiritual attack from a demonic spirit which seeks to influence a person's thoughts, emotions, or actions. A spiritual attack from a demonic spirit that seeks to influence a person's thoughts, emotions, or actions. There are two main goals of demonic oppression. Two main goals. Number one, to keep a person trapped and bound. Two main goals of demonic oppression. One, to keep a person trapped and what? Bound. Number two, number one, to keep a person trapped and bound. Number two, to paralyze a Christian. So they become ineffective. Number two, to paralyze a Christian so the Christian becomes ineffective. I've taught you here before that at the core of Satan's agenda, number one is to make sure that you never know God. If he does not succeed in number one, he will go to plan B. Plan B is that, okay, if you know God, you will not be able to serve him effectively. And the tool he uses for that thing is demonic oppression. He paralyzes you. So you are ineffective in your Christian life. So a Christian 
will say they love God, but they are gluttons. They are food. Their appetite for food is not under their, their control. So no matter how God says fast, sometimes fasting is not so that you will get a breakthrough. Say you know you cannot use fasting to manipulate God. I hope you are aware. Uh -huh. Sometimes God will send you on a fasting enterprise to teach you discipline. So that you, you, you tell the body. Fasting is you telling the body and your belly. You are not in charge. I'm in charge. So some of you, God has been calling you to a fasting regime for some time now. You can't respond because the, your, the area of your appetite for food is under the control of a demon. So your belly has become your God. Not only that, when you want to eat, you eat as if you are about to die. A demon will just be whispering in your ear. Chopo. So you don't believe Say no. So where you they put the food? I don't know. There's a demon. The demon's mouth is just open like. So every time you put rice, it's you and somebody that is eating it. There's a demon. So lastly, there are four major manifestations of demonic oppression. Four major manifestations. I'm getting ready for us to pray now. Four major manifestations. Number one is what you call a bondage. Those are the things we want to deal with tonight. A bondage. Bondage. Bondages are manifested in what we call demonic chains. Demonic prisons. Bondages. Demonic chains. That means in the realm of the spirit, the person has been chained. The person has put, been put in a prison. Most of the time when you see somebody who is being oppressed by demons like that, the major area of oppression is in their physical body, in their, 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 uh, their, 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 their will, and... Uh, other areas of their lives. Number two. Number two. Addiction. Areas of demonic oppression. Addiction. When somebody is under the demon of addiction, the major area of control is their appetites. So you have people who are addicted to nicotine, addicted to alcohol, addicted to sex, addicted to pleasure. So they're always looking for things to give them pleasure. When you are dealing with bondage, you are commanding your soul to come out and be free. Have you read in the book of, of Proverbs? I think it's Proverbs now. I think it's Proverbs. Or is it Psalms? Is it Psalms? Is this Psalm 147 or Psalm 124? I can't remember. The Bible says, My soul has escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Which scripture is that? Psalm 124. Yeah, Psalm 124. My soul, give us that scripture, media. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have what? So tonight you are going to command your soul to come out of every bondage. When you, are, when you want to address the matters of appetites, then you begin to deal with things like cravings. You cannot continue to crave what God calls an abomination. Cravings. Cravings for food. Cravings for companionship, cravings for sex, cravings for recognition, cravings for pleasure. Number three, sickness. I've already explained sickness when I was doing the analogy. 
the area of bondage for sickness is usually your body. In some cases, it can also be your mind. So there's what we call mental illness, where the person's mind is attacked. Attacked, but it's normally the body. Now, whether it is the mind or the body, the goal of demonic oppression through sickness is distortion, crippling, twisting, mangling. So that the beauty of that person's expression will never be seen. Imagine a woman bent and twisted for years. There's no way you would have looked at that woman and said there's anything beautiful about her. That's what demonic oppression does to sickness. Number four, the last, rejection. Rejection. Demonic oppression happens through what is called the spirit of rejection. And the way this spirit operates is that you see the person suffering from self-hate. Self-hate. Self-pity. Shame. A poor sense of self-worth. Guilt. The person had, lived, had a bad past like me. Had a terrible past like me. But today she can't forgive herself. Every time she thinks about herself, she has this overwhelming sense of worthlessness. That's not normal. That's a demon. If not, people like us can't be preachers. Do you know the mess that God picked me from? I've told you many times that when I get to heaven, I'm going to tell Paul that you should not have written that verse of scripture like that until you met me. He said, this is a great saying, a worthy saying, and it is worthy of acceptation that God came to save sinners of whom I I'm chief. I say, oh, guy, you're not chief. Oh. I am chief. Kesena, I am chief. Because some people, when they serve Satan, Satan does not know them. Because they play double game. They serve Satan in the night. They serve God in the morning. When Satan sees me, he says, Boba, hello. I was Satan's guy. I serve Satan with all my chest. All my chest, all my heart, all my soul. But Jesus took me, washed me, put a fire in my belly, gave me a new life. Dear brother, there is nothing you have done that God cannot forgive you. Nothing. There's no mess in your past. That makes you so messed up that when God sees you, he will walk away. Rather, he will embrace you. The challenge with many people is the love of God is too much for them to bear. So Satan keeps telling them, look at your past. Come on now. Take your eyes off your past. He says, looking away unto Jesus, the author. You see, he can, my dear brother, he can take a prostitute and she will be more anointed than cool man. He can take a drug addict and put a fire on him that a generation will burn. So whenever you see self-pity, self-hate, do you know that I've seen some people in the West especially, I've seen their videos, they hate themselves so much, they begin to cut their own body. It's a demon. Shame. You are just sitting, you are just, the overwhelming shame consumes your soul. It's a demon. Every time you hear the voice of condemnation, let me give you a spoke, it's not Jesus. The way the Holy Ghost speaks is called conviction. He convicts, he doesn't condemn. 
the only way a man will be condemned is if he refuses to believe in Jesus and he dies. So the Bible says, by your words, you will be saved and by your words, you will be condemned. But what the Holy Spirit comes to do is that he convicts, he will tell you, oh God, this thing is not right. The way you are living is not good. But every time you hear condemnation in your spirit on this side of the divide, it's not Holy Ghost. It's, it's, it's the voice of the devil. The Holy Spirit speaks with a clear voice of conviction. He will speak in your conscience. As I'm teaching now, what some of you are feeling now is the weight of conviction. The weight of conviction. So these are the four areas we want to deal with tonight. Bondages addictions spirit of rejection and then what's the last one sickness so when we are finished praying and finish the impartation then we will take a passover communion bow your heads where you are i want you to begin to thank god now that tonight tonight the end to every affliction, every demonic oppression has come. I want you to be deliberate. Begin to thank God now. Thank him now. I want you to do this while you are sitting down. Don't stand up. Thank him now. Oh, no shadow you will lie mountain you will climb coming after me make sure you are praying no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me no shadow you will light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't see down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, he chases me down, fights still I'm found, leaves the ninety-nine. I go
I saw the spirits in scatter. I saw it come up in flame. Your soul must escape from that snare. Your soul must escape from that snare because the snare is broken. Tonight is that night you have waited for, young lady. That molestation in your dream must end tonight. Pray now. Lord, I know tonight is the end. The father of that boy, if that chair will not allow you to pray, you can stand now. You can stand now. I know today is the end. Today is the end. Today. of God. I can literally feel it here. There are some of you that have been battling with the spirit of rejection. Guilt, shame, worthlessness. On side and online, I feel the power of God now. Those spirits are going to detach themselves from your mind, from your soul, from your body. If you don't pray for yourself, I can't help you. The father of that boy, the Bible said he said with tears, he cried out, help my own baby. Hola barakobe, ya dada barakobe lai, inda bola kabole baria. And I remind you, we don't have enough time. Very soon, prayer time will be over. You better pray. You better pray. You better pray. Ada bola kabele kabilora, dia dele bola bariare, inda kobe la biabora, shaba ba 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 ba, dia dole kabila dobre ano, ri ba 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 ba.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Real quick. Don't lose the prayer fire. Keep praying. Just be listening to me. Real quick. You are here tonight on site online. You have not given your life to Jesus. You have not given your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, come now. That's the first deliverance. Salvation. If you are online, just write quickly. I want to be born again. You are here. You are not yet saved. Come now, come now. I'm waiting for three people. Where are they? Don't stop praying. Keep praying, keep praying. Let the people that need to get born again come. I'm waiting for them. I hear the number three in my spirit. Where are they? Come. Salvation is not the joining of a denomination. You grew up in a Christian home. Does not mean you were born again. On site, online, media, if there are people online, begin to engage them quickly. Begin to engage them quickly. Let them begin to pray the sinner's prayer. I'm waiting for one more person in this hall. The Lord told me there are three of you in this room. There has never been a day in your life that you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth unto salvation. It means that you are not born again. God wants to deliver you first from the power of darkness so that you have authority to pray deliverance prayers. Without the deliverance of salvation, there is no authority My God, the last person is struggling. I see you in the spirit. Be released to come. Be released to come. Be released to come. You that is there, keep praying. Keep praying. Today is the end. Today is the end. Quickly now, quickly. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. When we are done, I will lead you to pray four prayer points. And the heaven will open. Your life will change after tonight, I assure you. Today is the end. The snare is broken. And my soul escapes those of you in front those of you in front begin to tell Jesus I surrender my heart my soul my body all that I am my spirit come and be my Lord my Savior my King Take over me completely. I am yours. I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess that I'm a sinner. But I also receive the forgiveness of sin by the blood of Jesus. Oh, Labada Makoba. Those of you in front, pray. Those of you online, giving your life to Christ, pray now. Instantly. You are being delivered from the power of darkness and being transferred, being conveyed into the kingdom of his son. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Those of you in front, rise on your feet. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Don't lose your prayer. Those of you in front, stand up, stand up. Please go and meet these people there. 
pray now. We're out of time now. We're out of time now. Yeah, da 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 da. me quickly say oh my soul I can't hear you say oh my soul come out now every demonic chain break every demonic prison scatter open your mouth and pray now pray now command your soul Come out! Come out! I got the bad, I got the bad, I got the bad, I got the Oh my soul, come out! Every demonic chain break! Every demonic prison scatter! Oh my God, pray, 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 pray. You have two minutes. Engage that prayer. Demonic chain. Break. I said break. You are dealing with bondage now. Pray, 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 pray. Every prison that they put my father, they put my mother, they put my siblings, any prison they have put my soul, I command the prison scatter. I say scatter. I say scatter. I say scatter. Ida Barakabo. I like the way some of you are praying. You are serious. You are serious. Some people came to look. Leave the people that are looking to look. You pray. Especially if you have recognized there's a bondage in your lineage. Pray with holy anger. Pray with holy anger. This is the last day of the past. Nothing must escape tonight. Nothing must escape tonight. Yes, young lady pray. Young man pray. Young man pray. Woman pray. Man pray. Children pray. Teenagers pray. On site. On land. Scatter. I just scatter. I just scatter. I just scatter. I just scatter. I'm seeing somebody in the spirit now. There's a demonic chain on your leg. I'm seeing it in the spirit now. As we are praying, that chain is scattering. It's scattering. It's scattering. It's scattering. The power of God will pick you up. It's a demonic chain. Fire of God. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Fire! I'm seeing a lady. The way that chain came upon you is that you had a wrong relationship. You know what I'm saying. There's a man you had sex with. And after that, you began to be molested. It's a demonic chain. I'm cutting you off from that connection now. That connection is breaking now. It's breaking now. It's breaking now. 
that demonic chain it breaks in Jesus name if you are not under the power of the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit did not knock you down or you are overwhelmed by the Spirit make sure your amen is loud I said in Jesus name on the top of your voice when I say oh my soul I cannot hear you say oh my soul from tonight you are free! You are free! You are free! Shout Jesus! Shout Jesus! Shout Jesus! Listen, be sensitive. Some of you as you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. It doesn't mean that you are possessed. A Christian cannot be possessed. It just means that demons are escaping from your life. Some of you might just feel the need to go and urinate. Go and do it quickly. Things must leave your body tonight. Somebody say, my soul is free. My soul is free. Now lift up your voice. Say, every addiction Every craving, every yearning from demonic spirits, I bind you, I scatter you, you end tonight. Open your mouth and pray. Plutonic. Sexual cravings are from the feet of hell. Alcohol addiction. Nicotine addiction. Addiction to, to marijuana. It ends. It ends. Pray, 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 pray. You have only two minutes. My mind, cancer, arthritis, 
whatever name you bear tonight come out and never enter again open your mouth and pray quickly come out come out and never enter Your family member that is sick is not here. Mention their name and pray. Twisting spirits, crippling spirits, spirits that consume, spirits of infirmity. Come out from my body. Come out from my mind and never. of deformity, spirit of sickle cell, spirit of deafness, spirit of blindness, oh father, leave him, let him come, let him come, stay there, stay, stay. for yourself. See the way you are praying. Never enter again. From my hand to do my knee.
in Jesus name be still if you can Holy Ghost movement of serpentine spirits I hear it in my spirit there are five of them moving in the head moving in the body wherever you are now let the fire come upon you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet it's your night of deliverance that devil is a liar satan lose that one now i said lose that one now lose lord there are three more from my right to my left from the back to the front let the fire descend upon them now from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet let it be like a wave a wave of fire a wave of fire a wave of fire a wave of fire now the holy ghost will continue to walk your last prayer point tonight every spirit of rejection spirit of rejection you know what this spirit does it will make you hate yourself and make men despise you it's a spirit of rejection you don't like yourself even men will not like you it comes with a strange smell it's a spiritual smell that is upon a man that he enters into places and men will naturally despise him are you ready to pray from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet anywhere there is a spirit of rejection by the power in the name of Jesus come out and never enter again open your mouth and pray now the movement of serpents they end tonight. You demon, come out! Come out! In the name that's above every other name, leave this body. Leave this body. Leave this body. Every covenant with Leviathan. Every covenant with Leviathan. Break! I said, break! Set bread. For he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Today is the day of salvation. Come out! Come out! Yes, you don't own this body. Every covenant with darkness. Break! Come out! Come out from the eyes, from the nose, from the chest, from the navel, anywhere you are. Come out. I said, come out. That demonic movement, it stops. Out. Out. Put your hand on her belly, keep praying in tongues. Put your hand on her belly, keep praying in tongues until I tell you to stop. Are you still praying? Spirit of rejection, wherever you are. That movement. It stops. Leviathan, get out. I said, get out. I know you. Leave this body. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave. Leave. Put your hand on her belly. Thank you, Lord. I'm about to pray for the sick now. 
But there are areas we have not touched and we can't touch because of time. So this is what we are going to do. When I say Holy Ghost, you say fire. We'll do that seven times. Then the Lord will touch people he needs to touch. Be sensitive. Ushers, don't let anybody get hurt. I beg you. I beg you. Ushers, be sensitive. There are some people walking in front. Others should be deployed properly. When I say Holy Ghost, you say fire. When I say Holy Ghost, you say fire. We'll do that seven times. The fire of God will go through some people's body. Any residue of demonic activity, it will be burnt off tonight. You cannot enter Canaan with Egypt's goods. Everything that is Egypt must leave your body tonight. We've dealt with dates. We have dealt with generational patterns. Tonight is a night of freedom. Holy Ghost! Yes, Lord. Move upon this congregation now. Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, yes. Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Number four. Holy Ghost! Yokes are broken. Demons are cast out. Holy God! Power of God! Power of God! Help them, help them, help them! Power! Power! Watch us. No need to bring them. Find a place for them to rest. We don't have place in front. Fire of God. A spiritual cleansing is going on. It's going on. It's going on. There's a young man somewhere in this middle. Holy Ghost. That demonic crown that was placed on his head. I say remove it now. That demonic crown. Remove. Be gone. Be gone. There's a young man. There's a young man. Holy Ghost, help me find him. As a sign. As a sign. As a sign. As a sign. A crown from the marine kingdom was placed on his head. I command that crown. Be gone, scatter. Be gone, scatter. Be gone, scatter. Be gone, scatter. As I count to three, let the power of God identify that young man. One, two, three. Power! Holy Ghost, that I may pray for him. Help me identify him. A young man bound by a demonic crown. Placed upon him. You found him. Bring him. Yes. It must leave your head. It must leave your head. You must be free. Tonight is your night. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lift up your hands and shout, Jesus! One more time, shout, Jesus! For the last time, shout, Jesus! Right now, if you are in this congregation, Kai, crippling spirits, any demonic disease. Come quickly. Ushers, clear the front now. Clear them, clear them, clear them, clear them. Crippling sicknesses. Come quickly. By your blood, you spoil principalities.
have one minute, one minute. This is going to be quick. Put your hand where that crippling disease is and command it to leave your body now. Paraventure is in a place where you can't put your hand. Place your hand on your head. And pray now. I believe that tonight I am healed. I believe. This demon is banished from my life forever. Arthritis. Hi. I'm seeing three people with growths. Those growths are being cut off right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In fact, the symptoms will leave your body in this hall. You will know that you are being healed. You will know in your body. Oh, Rabbi Labo for Bali. Pastors, just lay hands. Lay hands quickly, quickly, quickly. On site and online, by the power that is in the name of Jesus, the reign and rule of crippling disease ends today. As they have communicated to God, today, healing is transmitted. As hands are laid upon them in agreement, they are instantly healed. Thank you, Father. This demon, leave this body. You cannot consume this life. Your, your expansion, your growth, your spreading, it ends in the name of Jesus. I go into the very depths of darkness and I redeem your soul. I pull it out of the clutches of death. You shall not die. You live. Strength comes to you now from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I command that consuming spirit. Leave. Leave. Every tissue, every organ receives life. Let even the symptoms begin to vanish. Your journey to recovery begins tonight. Even doctors will be confounded. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life. God, you are a God of mercy. I join my brother and my sister. And we bring your daughter's soul back to the congregation of the living. We pull you out of the clutches of this wickedness. Wherever it was done, however it was done, it ends tonight. Thank you for this miracle, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Mommy, your recovery begins now. In the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Let's prepare for the communion.
according to the time of life, you will run on your own two feet. Eat with your own hands. Embrace your children. In this very hall, we will dance to the Lord in victory. It will be spoken that that which men said was impossible, God has done by mercy. In the name of Jesus. Now, if you've never had communion here before, this is how we do it. When you get the bread, eat immediately. Continue praying in tongues. Remember, this communion is a Passover. It's a Passover. So things that have latched onto your life before now is the end of that regime. Yes. It's a new day. Beginning of months, beginning of years. It's the beginning of your life's journey. Yes. You were not living before now. You were just existing. But life is about to begin. Yes. And like I told you, it's a prophetic program. We'll do Passover now. By October, by God's grace, by that time, the building should be nearing completion. We're going to have 100 days of prayer. And the Lord said we'll have a double Pentecost. So we'll have 50 days, Pentecost. At the 50th day, we'll be entering into that auditorium, Pentecost. So prepare yourself. It's a prophetic program. Your life will be totally altered. This communion, as you are taking it, God is going to be wearing you a new garment. It's the seal upon what the Lord has been doing for us in these 40 days. So once you get the bread, eat it, then we'll drink the wine together. Do you understand that? So the ministers will serve, then you take it. Those of you online, ministers, let's go. Those of you online now, get biscuit, get coke, get whatever you can find. Plug in now, plug in now. These condiments are the flesh of Jesus indeed and the blood of Jesus indeed. As we drink, as we eat, indeed it will become the meal of life. And the name of Jesus is glorified. Amen. Quickly now, ministers, let's go. Quickly, 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 quickly. Let's go as quickly as possible. Wine, bread, wine, bread. Go quickly. Go quickly, go quickly. Go quickly, quickly, quickly. Babe, do here, do here, do here. Babe, do here. hold the wine. Give him another wine. Take the bread, hold the wine. Eat the bread immediately, hold the wine. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Don't be casual. As you eat the bread, be praying in tongues. If you can't pray in tongues, pray your understanding. Don't forget the choristers on the altar, please, ministers. Let's go quickly. There's an atmosphere where nothing is impossible. No disease in cure. Oh, la baraka La ba 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 ba. Be sensitive. Some of you will feel like vomiting after drinking the wine. Don't hold back. Some of you will feel things leaving your body. Leaving your body tonight. Leaving your body tonight. Eat the bread. Do it with faith, with faith, with faith. Do it with faith. There's an atmosphere. Do it with faith, with faith. Nothing is impossible. No disease in cure. There's an atmosphere. In the atmosphere of Jesus. Atmosphere. Jesus, 
Has everybody gone in wine? Pastor Barogum, love it on the camera. If you've not gotten bread or you've not gotten wine, wave your hand quickly. Come on now, there are people behind there. Pastor. Over here, go to the back, go to the back. Wave your hand, you've not gotten bread. Wave your hand so they can find you quickly. We're out of time. We must close in the next five minutes, quickly. If you've not gotten bread or wine, wave your hand. Okay, everybody has gotten now. Everybody has gotten now, quickly. For I received from the Lord which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In the name of God the Father, Amen. in the name of God the Son, Amen. in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Drink and pray now. Pray now the Holy Ghost for two minutes. Two minutes. Pray now. Pray now. You have just two minutes. Exercise your spirit. Some of you may feel things trying to break out. It's a budget. Yes, 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 yes. Everything that the heavenly father did not plan is rooted up now. Quickly, one more minute. Let the life of God course through your body. Let it flow. Let it flow. Your healings are being permanent now. God is establishing his work in your vessel. Yes! Thank you, Father. 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 Can you begin to appreciate God tonight? I have an assurance in my spirit that there are mighty healings that have taken place tonight. Thank Him, wherever you are. Your soul has escaped. Your soul has escaped. Your soul has escaped. It's a new day. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Come on now, be profuse in your thanksgiving. If you are like that father that brought your son to Jesus, I feel a weight of glory, even on sight. 